Are you thinking about investing in Disney? Or maybe you're one of my copy traders and already have a position and want to know why I have it as one of my handful of companies to invest in. Well, in this video, I'm going to break down some of the reasons why I think Disney will be worth around double what it is worth now in 6 to 12 months. Stay tuned to find out. Hello and welcome. I'm Wayne from WES Investments, bringing you stock market news, portfolio updates and training on how to make money in the market, all on this channel. So if you're new here, consider subscribing and hitting the bell so you're notified of my new videos. Boring bits first, this is not financial advice, I'm not a financial professional, everyone's financial situation is different and you should not consider this or any video that you find on YouTube as financial advice. Disney is a huge company. I think to just make one short video explaining the investment case for Disney would be like trying to sum up the Lord of the Rings in one sentence. All right, just don't bother. So what I'm going to do is break it down into the three segments that it has created for the business and to do a video on each one of those different segments. So this is part one, which is parks, experiences and consumer products. Now this segment of Disney has been performing very well over the past few years. In 2019, Parks, Experiences and Products reported $6.8 billion in operating income, an increase of 65% compared to the $4.1 billion in operating income generated five years earlier. Now, that might sound good, but the figures have actually slowed slightly. In 10 years, Disney has gone from just shy of $2 billion to just shy of $7 billion. That's around 250% growth over the decade. This impressive decade can be seen in the chart that I'll show you now. Obviously the numbers on the right are in millions. So that is $1,000 is actually $1,000 million, which is 1 billion. And as you can see, this consistent growth every year. This amazing growth has been a combination of expansion, growing attendance and increasing customer spending. The expansion of the Disney lineup to include the likes of Star Wars and Marvel has also seen considerable investment in the new rides and experiences for Disney, as well as the rights for a whole host of products. This will have boosted sales significantly in these areas. However, I believe it has taken Disney quite some time to really capitalise on those purchases. When you consider Star Wars was purchased in 2012, a Marvel in 2009, Disney has had to wait for existing contracts to expire for them to be able to fully capitalise on these elements. And now that they are in full swing, the new Star Wars rides and Marvel Land are going to be a surefire hit, ensuring the customer retention for so much longer. However, now we have the Dumbo in the room. See what I did there? The COVID-19 virus has knocked the world for six. Theme parks are not deemed safe and many around the world have been closed for a significant time. At the time of recording, these parks are just starting to open up with very limited attendance allowed. These expensive parks still require significant maintenance, even when there's no customers in them. So when they do open up, they're going to need further investment to ensure that customers are safe. This is going to seriously hurt this segment of Disney this year with their financial repercussions to continue for a number of years for going forward. On the flip side, when the parks do open, I do believe that despite the virus, the issue will be more the supply rather than demand. Disney will be limited by the numbers of guests they can safely allow into the parks and their experiences, rather than wanting people to attend. Next year sees the 40th anniversary of Disney on Ice, 50th anniversary of Walt Disney World, and Walt Disney's 120th birthday. Especially after the pandemic, Disney is going all out on celebrating this anniversary. It will be an extra special event that will draw so many people back to fall in love with this company. In 2019, this segment generated an average daily operating income of $18.5 million with 72.8% of that from parks and experiences. What this shows is that although the damage to Disney during this time is very bad, we are talking about a company that normally makes such good profits 
that it would not take long to recover from this. For every day closed, the parks will need one to one and a half days open at full capacity to make back the losses. Note that the parks will not be at full capacity right away. What this means for the business is that over the next couple of years, dividends are likely to be much lower and growth will be slower than it would have been without COVID. There are many with concerns that the public will be far too concerned to go flooding back to the, these parks, that COVID will have made such a big impact on people's lives that they will not feel safe going back to the park. And that is most certainly not what I am seeing from people I speak to online and in person. While people are being far more cautious, especially at the moment, firstly, there are still plenty of people that have no fear of the virus and would be happy to go right in now without any precautions. Then there are, and in my opinion, this is the vast majority, people who want to wait for this to blow over and then go back out in force. These are people that at the moment are following the rules, but roughly to the letter. Once they are given the all clear to go back in, they will go. There are of course still plenty of people that it will take a lot longer for them to return. But it is my belief that this will be for the most part mitigated by the limits on capacity at the parks. Contributing to the success of Disney over the years is the growth of the US economy as well as the global economy and the expansion into China. With Hong Kong being built in 2005 and then Shanghai 11 years later in 2016, this is pushing Disney to a new, rapid, growing middle class customer base. The growing economy in both the US and China is creating more wealth, which is creating nice tailwinds for Disney. In the US, Disney is growing its revenue at a faster pace than the US economy is growing which is a very good sign, as it shows the company is also growing on its own merits and not just by default. My main concern for the Disney parks is actually the missed opportunity in Europe. While the European market is fairly stagnant at this time with various issues such as Brexit, other instability and bureaucracy, there is a very noticeable gap in Europe for Disney. The existing park in Paris is woefully underdeveloped with many Europeans opting to go to the US parks if they want a Disney experience, instead of going to the nearest park in Paris. This means it's a much bigger expense, much less of it going to Disney because of the significant travel expenses for a family, and also due to this often the risk of them not doing it. The strength of the Disney brand is that it all comes together and builds on this experience. The whole Disney brand is really built around building an experience for the customer, regardless of if that is at a park, a cruise, playing with a toy, watching a TV show or film. The, the Disney magic is what creates a customer for life. Exposing more people to each element grows each other segment as well. For example, a customer who goes to a Disney park is more likely to then get Disney Plus and buy the Disney toys. Just like a customer who gets given a Disney DVD is likely to then want to go to the parks and to buy, play with the toys. This is why the growth in China is so important for the growth of Disney. But it's also that huge missed opportunity in Europe. However, having said that, I do believe that this could be changing. Disney only actually purchased Paris back in 2017. Previously, it was actually owned by someone else. Since that purchase, they have announced that major investment was planned and that was supposed to be starting in 2021 with three new areas, which was Marvel, Frozen and Star Wars. If these plans go ahead, this could make a major turn in the future of Disney Paris and maybe the park will start to get more love from Disney. Over recent years, Disney has reinvested heavily into the parks and experience segment. This segment does depend on significant investment to keep the customers engaged and coming back. However, the investment has been over and above this and has more than just maintained the status quo. The significant investment has increased park capacity and average customer spend. This spend makes the park experience very special 
which in turn consolidates the customer experience and cements the love of Disney, which encourages repeat purchases across the Disney group, and in turn will ensure generational repeat custom. The results of this can be seen in this graph, where you can see that most years, or 8 out of 10, there has seen significant growth in numbers. At first glance, you will see a large spike in 2017, which connects with the opening of Shanghai halfway through 2016, but that accounted for an extra 5.4 million visits in 2017, 11 million over the 5.6 million in 2016. Great numbers, right? Except for the fact that Animal Kingdom alone had 12.5 million visits, up from 10.8 million visits in 2016. The reason for this is the launch of Pandora, which is the world of Avatar. Now, I hear you, this is old news, right? 2017 is ages ago, right? And yet, look at the pattern on the graph. When investment in the parks drop, the following year, the attendance grows at a slower pace, or in some cases, even declines. Remember that a drop in this graph does not mean a drop in attendance unless it goes below zero. So for example, in 2016, attendance was still higher than 2015. However, the drop in spending in 2017 hit growth in 2018 and then 2019. Part of this is also believed to be caused by many people wanting to wait for the new rides and features that were being added at the end of 2018 and in 2020. If 2020 had been a normal year, based on this graph and the link to expenditure, we would have expected a good increase in visitor numbers for 2020. So, what major investments do we have coming up to boost visitor numbers more? Well, I've just mentioned that the three areas in Paris, but in Disneyland Resort California, we've got the Avengers Campus and Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway, which is supposed to start next year. We have in Florida, Magic Kingdom has got Tron 2021. In Epcot, there is so much that's happening. But for me, the main thing is the Guardians of the Galaxy, which is going to be the world's longest enclosed roller coaster, which again is due in 2021. There is also a new hotel experience which you'll be able to stay in the Star Wars Galactic Star Cruiser, uh, which again is due in 2021. In the Tokyo Disney Resort in Japan, now although this is not owned by Disney, they paid a license fee, they're doing some huge developments there, including a Toy Story Hotel, again due 2021, Fantasy Springs, which is three new areas for Tangled, Peter Pan and Frozen, and there's also going to be another large luxury hotel, all due in 2022. Hong Kong, which is 47% owned by Disney, and Disney also directly oversees operations. They're releasing a new Frozen-themed ride, which is due out next year. Shanghai Disneyland, which again is 47% owned by Disney, and also operated by a management company, which is 70% owned by Disney. So a good chunk of the funds from this do come out to Disney. And they are opening a new themed land, which is actually going to be Zootopia. And that's expected to open in 2021 as well. So a lot of stuff is due for next year. Whether that's going to happen due to the current financial situation, it's not 100% clear, but I still can see it happening. And obviously one area that I haven't mentioned is the cruise ships. There's three existing cruise ships and there, as far as I can tell, is still plans to it double the size of this fleet over the next four years because starting from next year, they'll be adding a ship a year. And obviously they're not running at the moment, but hopefully soon that will start to pick up. So that should be another really big boost. Like I say, when you think in three years time, they will be doubling the size of this segment. And then we have consumer products, which has been partially impacted, but definitely not to the same extent that the rest of the segment has. And you think about this is computer games, so think of all the Star Wars and Marvel games as well as any normal Disney stuff. You've also got licensing, so think of all the different Disney products, even to the extent of like Disney Lego. These are all products that have probably sold very well during the, the recent global pandemic. 
we're also talking about 300 Disney stores around the world. We're talking about Disney Publishing Worldwide, which is actually the world's largest publisher of children's books and magazines. Disney owns a lot of stuff, and this is one segment. So thanks for watching this video. I hope you've enjoyed it, and I hope you found it helpful. If you have, please give me a thumbs up. Let me know what you think of this particular segment of Disney in the comments below. And make sure to catch up on the next video which will cover studio entertainment. And I'll see you there.